I want to talk first about China because China was one of the biggest buyers of gold and this is the China's official gold reserve since 2000 until the end of 2018. So China had very low in the beginning of the 2000, part of the opening of China, part of the reforms, part of the internationalization inter uh, of the renminbi, they need to base the currency on a real asset. And the real asset is still gold. So China started to buy gold. There was a long period that they didn't report any increase in the gold reserve until 2008. And then again, long period of no changes. And then 2015, suddenly, Chinese government announced the world, by the way, by the time we didn't report anything, we increased our gold reserve in 60%. And since 2015, actually, China government is doing, is a bit more transparent. They report their annual, uh, uh, they report what their annual uh, purchases of gold are. And, and their, and you can see, we're now getting to almost 2,000 tons. So China government holds now 2,000 tons of gold. We started less than 500. So that's four times since 2000, four times more gold since in the last, since 2000 until today. First of all, the same reason why gold price is going up. Because we live in, the world is changing. The world is changing very fast and governments are concerned. Government don't know where to put the money. Are we going to keep it in US dollar? US dollar is accumulating a lot of debt. And if you hold US dollar, that means you're subject to US dollar, to US United States government sanctions. From a political point of view, holding US dollar means the, gov the US government has a leverage on your country. That's something the Chinese don't want, obviously. That's something the Russians don't want, the, 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 the Turks don't want. Enough with leverage by the US government. That's, that's a more political reason, I would say. Second is generally diversification. Again, if you think of it, China holds the foreign reserve is 100, except it's gold and dollars. That's not diversified enough. You need to diversify more and, and, and be ready to improve your, your financial portfolio. So from this, from diversification point of view, they want to uh, uh, dump the dollar and buy more gold. And by the way, China in 2011 held 14% of the US debt. Today, they're at 7%. So if, since 2011 to 2019, China decreased its exposure to US debt in half. And the dollars, some of these dollars that they're selling are going to buy gold in exchange. So they're switching currency for currency. Now, if you look at how much gold is part of China portfolio, it's still a, a very small part. This is the percentage of gold holdings um, as part of China's foreign reserve. So you see, it's around, we started 10 years ago at 1%, now it's about 2.5%. I mean, 2.5% of China's foreign reserve are in gold. That's very, very, very low. So if you look in, on, on holdings by uh, uh, other banks, China is number seven in the world in total amount of gold. If you look at the uh, foreign reserve, it's part of the foreign reserve, it's very low. So look, US 75% of its foreign reserve is in gold. Germany 70%. Italy and France 60%. Look at Taiwan, by the way. Small quantity, 3%. Portugal. So you see the developed economies hold a lot of gold. And China is still lagging behind, only 2.5% again compared to the America 75%. So if you look again at the mindset, and we're thinking, okay, we are the new superpower. So we have a lot of, we have, we, call, we, we build the army, we build the economy, we have our tech industry. We have all these great things, but financially, economically, we're, fiscally, we're missing one thing that most Western countries have, and that's gold. So when we look about the prospect of, of what's going to happen, actually we expect China to continue accumulating a lot of gold. China bought almost 70 tons this year. Now just to give you, a ton, a ton of gold is uh, $40 million. So that's probably $2.8 billion, uh, if I calculate correctly, only this year. 
in seven months. And we believe the Chinese Central Bank is actually signaling to the world, we're serious about opening to the world economy, we're serious about positioning ourselves as a superpower, we're serious about internationalizing of the renminbi. And how do, we, how do we signal it? By accumulating gold. Same reasons, by the way, are from Russia. Russia bought even more, more than China. Russia today doesn't have US dollar at all, almost no, new, no US dollar. China, I think uh, Russia, this, uh, I believe this month was the first time the trading of Russia in Euro is almost the level of the trade US dollar. Again, the same reasons, political reasons. They don't want to be part of the USD system. They don't want to give leverage to the US government. They, they want to diversify. They're dumping all the US uh, uh, bonds, all the debt, and they're accumulating gold instead. Turkey, buying a lot of gold. Kazakhstan. So you see, if I, if, even if we're looking at these three countries, and I leave Poland, Poland is a unique uh, example. I'll talk about it shortly. These countries are the countries that have aspirations to grow. Traditionally, governments held gold. Most of 56% of the government gold is held by the Bank of England. So traditionally, the gold market is monitored by London still. The Global Precious Metal Association is the London Bullion Association. They set the rules of how gold bark should look like, how much purity, the weight. London sets the rule and Bank of England stores 56% of the world's uh, central bank's gold. Now what happened is interesting because Poland actually is building a big vault at the capital at Warsaw and they want to move the gold away from the Bank of England. And why? For the reason I started when I saw the plane from Venezuela. If you're a government and you're holding gold, but you're holding it with someone else, not necessarily you'll have access to it when you need it. So for example, I mentioned at the beginning, Venezuela has two gold inventories, one in Venezuela and one with the Bank of England. The Maduro government, under sanctions, cannot access the gold in England. The Bank of England says, I'm sorry, Venezuela, you're under sanctions. There are two people claiming to be president. Sort it out and you'll get access to your gold. And that undermines the idea of buying gold. If you're buying gold and, you're not, and you don't have access to it, there's no reason to do that. We've been talking to the, to the banks in the Philippines because we have an office there and they have the same thing. Their gold is stored with the Bank of England. So what we see now, we see governments are taking our buying gold and they're also bringing the gold back to them. Germany, a lot of Germany's gold was stored with the Federal Reserve in New York. Germany is moving the gold to Germany. Even inside the US, the government of, of Texas build a, a big vault in Austin in the capital, and they bring the gold from New York. So even inside the US, the states tell the central government, you know, we don't want you to keep our gold. We're going to keep take care of our, of our gold. And in this respect, I can tell you that Beijing built a very big vault. We don't know how big it is because it's a state secret, but from some inside information, we know it can contain much more than the 2,000 ton they, they, um, they bought already. And this vault is based in Beijing. So China doesn't keep the gold at home, Russia keeps the gold at home, Turkey uh, keeps the gold at home. See the difference between China and Russia, okay? Because Russia is really, doesn't want, want zero exposure. It's really disconnecting itself from, from the US dollar, right? They're really at very, very low levels. I don't think China will go there. I think China will keep a level of US dollar because it's still the world reserve currency. And I think China is smart enough to know that you cannot just dump it and, and without any substitution. What, they, what we think will happen, they'll diversify into other currency, but also the more the renminbi becomes international currency, actually it will become the second choice. So they, they, they solve the problem. So it's not only moved from dollar, it's not only dollar to gold, you know, it's accumulating renminbi in, in, in the same time knowing it's going to become international, it's going to gain more traction globally. I mean, even from a central bank's point of view, 
I think two thirds of the banks surveyed this year anticipate the RMB to go up from 2% as, as a foreign reserve currency globally to 10% in the next three years. So in a way, it's, it's, I would say uh, it helps you keep the, uh, the link to the global trade system.